when I think about how we got to Mozambique and how it all began, I remember the first time it was ever mentioned was back in about 2003, just after Lisa and I had joined African Outreach Ministries. We'd gone up to spend the weekend with Alan and Janelle in Chicago. We went down into his office and Alan said, you know, Scott, we need to start praying that God will open doors and let AOM expand into Mozambique or Angola. It's amazing to see how things have happened, how we came back and shared our, about our first trip into Mozambique or our second trip into Mozambique and partnered with Sugar Creek Baptist Church to target an unreached people group. And that's how it all began. Wonderful opportunity in Mozambique. Um, African Outreach Ministries did a lot of survey work and we looked for an unreached tribe there in Mozambique that would be oh, the kind of tribe we wanted with the situation uh, to start a church planning movement. We looked among the uh, unreached tribes in the northern province, but we found a tribe in the southern part of the country called the Tongas. After arriving and settling in Mozambique, I remember on one day when it was our afternoon off, we were traveling out to the beach to take the kids to the beach. And that, talking to Lisa and looking out at the trees, all the coconut trees going by and saying, Lisa, how are we ever going to know what's out there? How are we ever gonna know how many people are there? How many villages are beyond this road? Little did I know a few weeks later, I would be going into that very same area for the first time as a couple of my disciples, new disciples, asked me to take them to a funeral. A uh, relative's baby had died and they said, we have to be there early, we have no transport, can you take us? So I took him out there and I was so shocked that here it is, the very area that I had just said to Lisa, how are we ever gonna know what's back there? And today, we have an existing church in that same area and it all started with that one trip down the road. Hello, uh, my name is David Kuna. Uh, I was born in a village in Shai Shai called Zamboeni. Um, I met uh, Alan, uh, Alan Avery, and then he, he presented me to his wife, Janelle Avery. So I started working for them to do gardening. He presented me to do Scott Harris and Lisa. So uh, Scott, so I worked for them. I didn't know anything about God. I mean, it's like uh, they, they started to present Jesus to me. It didn't make sense to me. I was like, yeah, these people, they're just, you know, talking this story. And I never had time for it. It's like I never pay attention to that talk, but I didn't want anything to do with this because it didn't make sense to me. But uh, I, I just know that when God wants you to do something either way he will find a way so he they persisted and taught me keep talking to me and until uh one day when they decided to move to another province in Lipompo uh so uh i remember scott he asked me if he i would uh consider moving out there with them so i said oh, sure why not well, but I me, mean, I was thinking about just going to do the the garden and stuff. That was that what it matters to me. But they had a they saw the the calling in me. So we we I, we accept to move uh, to to Janine. While we were there, I mean, they keep keep continuing teaching me until uh, one day I I mean I accept Christ. <laughs> um, I just remember that that was like the fire burning in me like i needed to do this it's like i was lost it like it didn't make sense but to me just the light just shone in my face i said yes i accept christ i i i, I want to give my life to him he's my lord and savior and i want to be baptized before i i was even baptized lisa which uh scott's wife she had a, a, a vision, she told me, I saw, I, God showed me 
you were you were uh, ministering to your own people in Mozambique. And it, that didn't make sense to me, but she told me that. So I just I was amazed, like how God does things. Now that I know, so all this work that they were doing is it, with something. It's with more in my life. It meant a lot. So it's like now. Uh, we're ministering to my own people in Mozambique where God is doing miracles, where God is doing uh, incredible things. So it's when I see how God works. He can take you to some place where you don't even know where you're going and prepare you to send you someplace else. So he called me to a place when I thought I was just doing gardening, but he had a, a mission for, for the people, my own people. So in reflecting back over the last decade, 10 years in, in Mozambique, I, I can't even begin to tell all the stories, how there have been hundreds of people who've given their lives to, to Jesus, hundreds of them baptized. Uh, many more than that, thousands have probably heard the gospel presentation for the first time in their lives. And so God has done incredible things, and it's just been an, an incredible honor for us to be a part of that journey. such a blessing to be with a church here in Inyambani as they gathered together. How many? Probably 130 <laughs> different people came from different areas. Men, women, older men, young men, lots of young men, uh, children. It was wonderful to see them. It was wonderful to see their faith, their dedication, um, the fact that they had visions for the future and that they were well grounded rooted in the Word of God. So I was really blessed to see the fruit of that first trip as I was in the churches on Sunday. This is a spiritual battle and it will not be won without prayer. It will not be won without fasting. It will not be won without cost. Uh, the battle is always costly and, and we are in a tremendous struggle. The struggle is um, on, a, on a physical basis. Uh, there's sickness, disease. It is a tough place to live. Uh, we might have a beautiful beach or, or friendly people, but um, it's very difficult to live there. And, uh, and the spiritual aspect of tr helping people get out of the slavery to witchcraft, to break the worldview that is there, the animistic worldview, is an incredible struggle. I